All right, today we're going to be installing the new Henson Motorsports C5 short throw shifter. Um, we are in a 2001 Z06 Corvette. Uh, it should be very similar to your Corvette as well. Uh, to begin with, uh, we'll note that we've got the parking brake set. We are, do have the wheels chalked uh, as well. Uh, we are on a lift at the moment. Um, we're going to start with pulling out the center, uh, the center gear selector. Um, this is just pressed in. I've already loosened it a little bit. You just get a little bit of a uh, pry bar in there, get your finger underneath it, and it will pull out as such. You'll just set it to the side, and we're moving on next to just trying to remove the knob. Uh, removing the knob is pretty straightforward. Um, there is a T-shaped insert in here that keeps it in place. Uh, using two flathead screwdrivers, you can pry it out very gently. Um, you do have to do you want to do it slowly and you do pry against the knob It will not damage the knob if you're careful as you slot if you pry it up It will just pop out and like all things leather it will go back to its shape again So now that that, that is out that's the only thing that kind of keeps it in place That's what keeps it from spinning the knob the handle is threaded so with this keeper out of its way the keeper um, you could just unscrew the knob And voila, this factory knob is off. All right, the next thing to do is going to be to go ahead and remove the shift boot from the center console. Uh, on the C5, it's just held in by simple tabs. It's very easy to do. comes out just as simple as that. You've got these small little keepers that just take the slightest little effort uh, to get it out. So, all right. Now that the shift knob is out, it's currently in fourth. I'm gonna leave it in neutral for now. Um, we have some fasteners that we need to remove. Uh, part of this step is gonna to be to remove uh, both the rear part of the, da uh, of the center console and the front part. Um, we're gonna go ahead and remove the fasteners for the front now. In doing so, you have fasteners that are behind the ash behind the center console and behind the small grill here. To remove the small grill, we'll use a small flathead screwdriver and gently pry this out so that you don't scratch your dash or break the tabs. It's held on by two tabs here. Um, there is a Torx screw here, Torx 15. Um, this car is ironically missing a screw here, but there is one here that you would remove. And then there is also one inside behind the ashtray that you can see up in here. Some cars will have Torx bits. Some cars will have a hex head. This car has a Torx bit here and a hex head here. So it tells me maybe someone has been in here before. So um, very, very easily we're gonna grab the Torx 15 and we will remove this screw. Once it's removed, we'll just keep it to the side. We will be reusing all the hardware that is removed from this car. To get the, let's grab the wrench ratchet here, the hex that is in the back of the ashtray is a seven millimeter. It's using a quarter drive. All right, so we've removed all the front hardware. Now we're gonna work on the rear section of the center console. To remove the rear section, you'll open the door. Uh, these tech covers right here should pry out with your finger. If they don't pry out with the finger, you can use a small flathead screwdriver. Inside here are two 10 millimeter nuts that we'll remove, and very straightforward removal of those. We'll set the hardware to the side. All right, so with the rear nuts, hex nuts out of the way, those are a 10 millimeter. I use a quarter drive to get those out. Now we're gonna remove this uh, switch panel up front. This just pries up. You can use a flathead screwdriver, or as you just noticed, it's held in by two metal clips. It's very easy to remove. There's no reason to unplug these two things. You can leave them plugged in. We're just gonna hang this to the side for now. Be careful not to scratch anything. 
Um, we are also now going to need to remove the cigarette lighter um, plug. You'll use a flathead screwdriver to depress this and remove the plug. Inside this console are two 10 millimeter hex nuts, the same ones that style that are in the back. So you'll simply remove these. And set the hardware to the side. With this out of the way and the cigarette lighter unplugged, this console is now free to move. The only thing that's going to be holding it in still is going to be the connection for the gas door. When we slide it back, we'll unplug the gas door, and you'll want to make sure that's plugged back in, of course, before you finally reassemble your car. To this point, we'll pick up a little bit on the front part. We should be able to slide back the rear section. Probably would help to slip my seat forward a small amount. All right, with the center console pulled back, you can see the bottom of the gas door switch. This is the plug. It's just got a simple depress, depressed tab. You can do this with, without having to turn it over. Uh, if the gas door switch does pop out of its holder, don't fret, it'll go back in. It's a, it's a common error when you're first getting started. So with that done, we're just gonna move the center console out of the way. And now we're at a place where we can slide the center console back, the front portion. All right, so now we're gonna remove the center console. It's held in at the back by these clip uh, where the hardware was, so you need to lift it up. When you lift it up, you should be able to pull the clips free. It's held in by a number of small clips here, and it will simply lift out of the way, okay? All right, uh, with the center Divide section out. I went ahead and unplugged the switch panel uh, just because we're going to be in here for a few minutes longer than we would normally be in a typical installation. Um, this heat boot is held down by hex 10 millimeter uh, nuts. They're the exact same size as the ones that were holding every other 10 millimeter down, so you use the same tools. And just lift up on it and it will simply slide up and over the shifter. Now, with sitting this out of the way, you can now see that this is the stock shifter base. This is a very low mileage Corvette. The shifter's in pretty good shape for what it is. You'll notice how long the throw is compared to, about, to what you're about to enjoy. So, uh, finally, uh, again, using 10, the 10 millimeter um, same ratchet, you'll remove the four 10 millimeter bolts holding the shifter base to the shift box. The Henson Motorsports short throw shifter does not replace the shift box in the Corvette. There's no mechanical advantage in doing so, and you also don't have to worry about alignment issues when you leave the stock one in place. So the installation is fairly straightforward. All right, with the four bolts removed, the shifter lifts straight up. There is a there is a gasket that is on the bottom. Um, there is no fluid inside this. This gasket is just there for a, a vibration um, reason. So uh, just go ahead and peel it off, and the Henson Motorsport shift short throw shifter will sit right on top of this uh, the surface. Uh, we do recommend you go ahead and clean it all the way off, just for no other reason. Taking pride in your car. So. All right, so with the C5 base. Uh, shift box surface area cleaned and we've got the bottom of the stock handle. We do need the plastic grommet off the bottom of it. This just pries off so with a little bit of effort you can simply push it off the side. There's no fluid inside here. There's a little bit of grease that's still on the bottom of the ball. If yours is perfectly dry you may want to consider putting some more on there. Uh, so with the ball on in place uh, this shifter is symmetrical. Uh, there is no front, there is no back. We've got the decal on one side. Uh, there, again, it, it does not indicate 
any particular size. So uh, this plastic ball will go inside the shift locate shifter location and it simply drops down on top of the shift box. Again, since there's no fluid here, we're not dealing with any uh, mating surface uh, gasket needed. Uh, shifter, you'll use included hardware. It's a 5.30 seconds uh, hex head. Uh, if you have a small quarter drive socket, you can run it down with that, or you can use an Allen head, Allen wrench to drive it home, to run them home. I do suggest that you leave the shifter in neutral. That way you're not having to fight the tension of the shifter itself. So, we'll get all four of these in place and torque snug down, uh, and we'll be right back. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, with the C5 short throw shifter base bolted in place and torqued down, we'll take the factory boot, no modifications, and we'll secure it over the top using the existing hardware. You'll notice that it is in tension. It is going to help keep the heat out. Anything we can do to help seal the gap, it's gonna reduce the amount of heat that comes into the passenger compartment while driving down the road. All right, with that in place, we'll be installing the shift handle next. The shift handles are powder coated. Uh, we do run a die down the threads to remove the excessive powder coating that's there. You have a lot of adjustment in where the ball will ride. Of course, the higher the ball rides, the more leverage you'll have. The lower the ball rides, the more effort it'll take to uh, move the shifter. With the powder coating, uh, there it does powder coat inside the hole here. So you may find that the bolt itself will want to have to thread through the powder coating itself. Before you get to this stage, I encourage you to take the bolts either clean the hole out or take the bolt and run the bolt through in order to uh, go ahead and cut the threads accordingly. Um, the shifter handle will go on the driver's side so that the handle is offset to the driver. If for some reason you have a preference to put it on the passenger side of the car, there's no reason not to. It is purely personal preference. For this installation and what ones we'll do in-house, we'll be putting it on the driver's side. So uh, this will simply screw in place. and we'll torque it to the recommended torque specs. Okay. All right, so with the shifter handle bolted in place, uh, we will go ahead and install, reinstall the center console. Uh, everything reinstalls in the same fashion that it was removed not cover in great detail the reinstallation of all the factory plastics as uh, that should not be a mystery to you. With this back in place though I want to just go ahead and take a moment and show you the shifter movement. Uh, in this case we're using the C5 cross flags. There's also a white and black Henson Motorsports uh, knob with a pattern on, shift pattern on the top. You'll screw the shift ball down to your desired preset location, set the jam nut where you want it to be. This is purely something that's adjustable. One thing I noted earlier is depending on where the ball rides, you'll see some freshly cut threads on the power coating. If the ball rides high enough that you have exposed threads, you may have a uh, rust issue over time, so you'd want to make sure that you prep, uh, prep that. So, with the shifter in place, you'll notice how short the throw is compared to the stock one. So, we're in first, second, third, fourth. It does take a little effort to initially get started. This shifter design does not use centering springs, so they will not wear out. Uh, this design does have some break-in, so we encourage you as you get started with the product to leave the car parked alternating in first and alternating in reverse, and what it will do is leave the, uh, leave the shifter in tension, will uh, accelerate the break-in process. So after about usually two weeks of daily driving, the shifter becomes significantly smoother to drive and easier to operate. What you'll immediately notice is how faster the shift location, the shifter is, and uh, you'll have to learn how to accelerate your left foot a little bit more to, to accommodate it. So if you have any questions, please contact us at HensonSuperCars.com, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you.
with the reinstallation of the center console and the weighted shift handle installed, the shift boot back in its place, you'll see that the shift boot itself, since it's tapered, will sit on the weighted body handle, uh, the center thicker component of it. The jam nut will slide all the way down and the shift ball will screw in place. You have some adjustment where you want to be height wise in here, but you're basically set to where this will be. So you have the option then of, of running the jam nut down to where you want it to be and the boot will naturally spring back up to sit across the bottom of it. Use a three quarter inch wrench to tighten the jam nut to the bottom of it. If you ever experience your handle rattling while driving, it's because you did not tighten your shift handle, shifter handle tight enough. Uh, use the applied torque specs and uh, recheck your torque. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you. Be height wise. And so you have the option then of, of running the jam nut down to where you want it to be and the boot will naturally spring back up to sit across the bottom of it. Use a three quarter inch wrench to tighten the jam nut to the bottom of it. If you ever experience your handle rattling while driving, it's because you did not tighten your shift handle, shifter handle tight enough. All right, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth.